If you've been feeling overwhelmed with anxiety lately, try listening to a guided meditation on the Meditation for Anxiety podcast. Meditation is a proven natural way to help you calm down and dissolve stress so you can feel lighter and happier. So subscribe for free today to the Meditation for Anxiety podcast by searching for Meditation for Anxiety on your favorite podcast player. This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 2351, Benefits of Stretching and Mobility Work, by Eric Lea of ericlea.com, and I'm Dr. Neil, your host and narrator. Hey there, happy Sunday, and welcome to Optimal Health Daily, or OHD, where I read to you from some of the most popular health and fitness blogs online. Now, earlier in the week, I mentioned a little bit about how flexibility is important, how it's an important component of our overall fitness. So, Let's hear more about that as we get right to today's post and as we optimize your life. Benefits of Stretching and Mobility Work by Eric Lea of ericlea.com Often, stretching and mobility work are not at the top of our priority list when it comes to training. However, you should know that all of the things that are currently at the top of your list like burning fat, building muscle, and increasing performance, depend immensely on your ability to move properly. And what does it mean to be able to move properly? It means having a mobile and flexible body that can move easily through full ranges of motion without pain or strain. So in essence, mobility and flexibility may not be at the top of your list, but they definitely should be, since they are the foundational element of overall movement. Why stretching and mobility? The benefits. You're likely aware of the benefits of stretching for flexibility and why flexibility is important. Shortened, stiff muscles are a recipe for pulls and other injuries and can limit your range of motion as well as your ability to extend or reach. And this is especially important in sports. Mobility is similar, yet contains other elements, namely, stability. For instance, A flexible person may be able to reach down and touch their toes, yet when squatting, he or she may not be able to squat as deeply as someone who has plenty of hip and spinal mobility and may have to rise up on his or her toes in order to come out of the squat. A mobile body will be able to squat deeply without rounding the spine, remain stable in their hips under the weight, and be able to rise to standing while maintaining proper form. As you can see, mobility isn't just flexibility. It's strength, stability, and flexibility combined. Benefits of stretching. Obviously, a huge benefit to stretching is its ability to increase your range of motion, which of course aids in overall movement and injury prevention. But that's not all. Stretching can also decrease back and joint pain by decompressing joints. It can improve your posture by stretching out your chest and shoulder muscles which often become tight from hunching over. And it's an awesome way to open your chest and allow your shoulder blades to be fully pulled down and back. Stretching can also help improve circulation by loosening up your muscles for better blood flow and can also greatly improve extension ability. Imagine sitting all day, every day in a chair, then attempting to run or jump or even squat properly. Because your muscles have shortened due to sitting, even these simple moves are going to feel pretty difficult. In my opinion, you should be getting in a few stretches every day. You should even combine it with mobility warm-ups so that you're not stretching cold, which we're gonna discuss in a second. Benefits of mobility training. Having good mobility unlocks your body's potential. When you're mobile, you are able to engage and recruit more of the right muscles and joints for every movement, which increases your ability to build proper strength and perform at a higher level. To give an example, if you've ever hit a plateau with presses using a kettlebell, barbell, or other piece of equipment, it's likely not because you don't have enough upper body strength to press more weight, but instead, it may be your lack of spinal mobility and stability that's causing your form to break down, which disrupts your ability to press more. For instance, if you're pressing weight but lack spinal extension, or are unable to stand straight with proper posture, you will have trouble pressing the weight in a straight line overhead, which can lead to 
hyperextending your lower back to compensate. And that's not good news for those with spinal discs. As you can see, lack of mobility causes your form to fall apart, which leads to reduced ability to lift weight. And you could probably guess what that means when it comes to your gains. In addition to improving your movement foundation so that you can perform optimally, having good mobility can also help burn more fat. How is that possible? Well, because a person who is mobile and who can say squat deeper is going to be able to get their heart rate up faster and for longer than someone who can only squat to parallel. Not to mention, being able to lift heavier weight because you can maintain proper form can help you release more human growth hormone or HGH and testosterone. Both are crucial for maintaining leanness and building muscle. How to increase your flexibility and mobility. Ironically, we're born completely mobile and flexible. Have you ever watched kids run, jump, squat, and crawl? No lack of mobility there. As we get older, we tend to lose mobility and flexibility simply because we are not moving in ways that retain our mobility. Sitting, in particular, is a killer of mobility and specializes in creating stiffness and shortening nearly all of our muscles. So what do we do? Establish a regular mobility routine. This means carving out roughly 15 to 20 minutes of your workout session for stretching and mobility movements. As far as daily activities that can help you stay mobile, I would recommend standing up and stretching or moving every half hour if you work at a desk, just to realign your posture and prevent your muscles from getting too tight throughout the day. And if you can get in mini mobility sessions throughout your day, like five to 10 minutes, this would be ideal. The key with mobility is that it truly is the foundation for all of our movements and consequently, our ability to burn fat and gain muscle. So get into the habit of prioritizing it your body will reward you. To recap, one, stretching can increase your range of motion, help prevent injuries, and improve extension abilities. Two, mobility is the foundation of your ability to move properly, which affects your ability to burn fat and gain muscle and perform. Three, we are born mobile and begin to lose mobility over the years due to lack of movement. And four, To increase mobility and flexibility, incorporate 15 to 20 minutes of mobility work into your regimen. You just listened to the post titled Benefits of Stretching and Mobility Work by Eric Lea of ericlea.com. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. Look, I'll be honest. I would much rather run a mile than stretch. Stretching and flexibility work is something that I never really enjoyed. It always felt painful, and I felt like I was never making any progress. The only reason I took my first yoga class was basically because my doctor insisted I do it. Not because it would help my flexibility, but because he felt it would help me better manage my chronic condition. It wasn't until about class number 10 or somewhere around there that things started to finally click. You might be wondering, Why didn't I give up after the first few classes? I wish I could say, well, it's just because I'm that tough mentally. No, not really. It was because I'm so darn frugal, I didn't want to feel like I was wasting my money on a class I prepaid for. Anywho, I remember there was a point during our class's warm-up exercises where stretches that usually felt really difficult and painful started to feel a little easier. I was able to hold stretches for a bit longer and with less discomfort. By the time my prepaid yoga class ended, I was definitely much more flexible, but I still wasn't in love with stretching. Instead, it at least helped me realize that there was hope for me. So with patience and regular practice, even I, one of the least flexible people in the world, could begin to make progress. Now to this day, I still don't look forward to stretching after my workouts. By the end of my workouts, I'm tired and I just want to rehydrate and hit the shower. I don't want to spend more time making myself feel even more uncomfortable by working on my flexibility. I just want to be done already. But I soon remind myself of some of the things I learned in my yoga class, along with some of the wonderful information today's author, Eric, presented, and I convince myself that performing some mobility work before I hit the shower is probably a good idea. And without fail, I'm always grateful I did. 
All right, that's it for today. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for being a subscriber of the show. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you back here tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.